So here we are back again. Only two IMAX left. Well, two IMAX. This one is, is just a frame. So today we are going to be focusing on this one. We will forget about that one. And as you remember well, I made, I managed to sell the other iMac for 330 euros, but I spent on the iMac and making it work 120 euros. That leaves me with 210 euros in order to make this guy to work. So I, I remember that the main objective of this was to get my computer, another computer for the least amount of money I could spend on it. So for this one, we need a graphics card and a hard drive. And with 210 years profit, I think I, I could go a little bit on the high side. So I got a second-hand Crucial MX500, a solid-state drive, for 68 euros. And for the graphics card, I got an NVIDIA Quadro K3100. Why this one? Well, the original one was 2 gigabytes from AMD something, I don't remember, the name is going to be right here. And the price was around 200 euros and I didn't want to spend that money on there. This one was half the price, it already had 4 gigabytes instead of 2 gigabytes. And there is a, the next model, you have the K4000M on K4100M, they have very similar performance. So, and then the next one is 8 gigabytes GDDR5. And it's the K5000. That's already 200 euros as of today. So for half the money, I could get half the power. Let's call it this way. And why a quadro is because uh, my partner and I we will use the computer uh, mainly for Photoshop and probably CAD design. Uh, but it's, it's main office use, but CAD design is occasional. And also Photoshop is going to be for some time. And I heard and I read that these guys perform real well. Um, having said this, we spent 100 euros plus 70 euros, 170 plus 75, and we are off. So let's say we are in red numbers of about 35 euros, which is better than paying all of this money from your pocket right away. So I consider this goal achieved because 30 euros for an iMac from 2011, full specs, it's for 30 euros, you, I, I think you, you rarely find this because the condition of this guy is mint. Good, but I want to go a little bit beyond that. And I am going to keep improving this guy a little bit more. I would like to start with the RAM. It has already eight gigabytes RAM, two models, four gigabytes, but I found these two models on um, second hand, 16 gigabytes, and I found these two from AliExpress same size, 16 by DDR3. I already tested everything and it's working. So we'll have a total of 32 gigabytes RAM, which is good for, for example, simulations and also for Photoshop big files. This is an extra cost of 88 euros. Plus we are improving connectivity. We are adding, uh, I think, N and AC protocols with a new BPC Express uh, card plus dual BAM, 2.4 GHz and 5 GHz. So it will allow me to use the latest model of the Magic Keyboard and the Magic Mouse and also Apple Watch and stuff like that. It's supposed to be a Broadcom uh, with also uh, like an adapter. I will go more in detail in a second. And of course, this should be compatible with the Apple devices. All the list of these components below and all the links and the resources I used are right below in the description. But, you remember what I did with the other guy first? I went through a very thorough clean. Uh, so that's the plan. And to be honest, just to give you a little bit of a heads up, uh, that guy there is calling me for a project. Well, it is not that bad, it's not dirty at all. By the way, I'm permanently removing the Bluetooth uh, board that was here and the mini PCI Express Wi-Fi card because we don't need it anymore All right, I think it's a good time to talk about this guy here As you can see here is the module that is usually using uh, MacBook laptops. It's a BCM 94360ZD It's not very old but yeah, we'll do the job. This one here and now we're gonna go to this one 
Why? We need a PCI uh, mini PCI Express adapter, that's why we're using this one. And then there is something else you need to notice, it's USB D plus and D minus. And here, another thing you need to notice is we have four antenna sockets here. From where do we get these, these uh, lines? From this wire here. I will need to somehow get the D plus and minus, and all of this is in the in the tutorial below. I will anyway. I will put a picture here of the diagram, and uh, I will need a socket or I will need a, a, another connector like this in order to to get everything from here. Or I could chop the wires. I don't want to do that. So therefore, I am using the old one. I will try to. I'm gonna call it this way. Butcher this connector here and create another wire so the connector will be plugged here the wire will go from here <clears throat> and only two lines usb plus and d plus and minus will go to this part of the board second thing is the antenna you have the wire the cable here and this is my extension i bought a 40 centimeter extension i think we're gonna be on this on the short side so i need to check it Let's start, I think it's in the, we are in the perfect moment because there is no power supply, no uh, uh, backlight uh, board for the LCD panel here and we can reroute these cables here. This one is out, careful with this aluminium tape and I have to lift this one a little bit, you can see the marks, nothing relevant. Now let's try to fit the antenna extension and route it. This one I think I will do whenever I place the power supply here. I will try to find out my way with all of these wires and I will show you how. Just that's it. I just uh, created a 90 degree angle with the old connector with the new one. Careful with the, with the plug itself. It's super fragile and handling it. I would recommend to hold it from the, from the wires if you want to just route this wire. And then here below and also here and I'm leaving it here for now but I think it's a bit on the short side let's see I also placed a little bit of tape so it's protected against rubbing or other things like for example handling it by mistake and you will snap it out it looks like a goat wires correctly placed here and also this is the wire the new wire that we are it's coming from the uh, Bluetooth antenna and it's on the other side I think it should be it. Let's uh, place the power supply back. That should be it for now. Don't forget to plug in this guy <laughs> and this one too. Um, for now, I am going to leave it as it is. And let's jump to the motherboard. I'm going to change the thermal paste from the CPU and I'm going to start working the GPU side. That's, that's going to be interesting. This was an X pattern. I don't like how it looks like. I don't like it. But uh, yeah, it's all dry, I will just replace the paste. I found uh, two types of uh, CPU thermal paste here, which is not very nice. This should be thoroughly cleaned first, then the surface should be activated and then you should apply the thermal paste. You can see how it looks like. Someone uh, wanted to release some energy cleaning this. Jesus. I don't know if you can see, it's an i7-2600. After cleaning, um, this one too. Surface has been activated, so let's place the thermal paste. I'll just put the heatsink back. And remember, you don't have to tighten the screws. These screws, like there's no tomorrow. I mean, it's just to hold them together. Otherwise, the gap between the CPU's top surface and the bottom surface of the heatsink. It will be very close to zero, so there will be no thermal paste, and therefore the result we saw. I have my graphics card here, and I have my heatsink. For this very model, it has exactly the same TDP as the as the AMD, the, the previous one, so that's also good. Uh, for this very model, the type is MXM.B, the A should be shorter, and therefore we require the two-pipe heatsink, which is going to be shorter. So for this model, <coughs> um, Apparently we need to do some works right here on these two blocks. I'm gonna just uh, do like a dry test fit and let's see what do I have to remove. It looks like I will have to perform a little bit of a rework in this area in order to fit these two parts of the GPU. The squares I have marked they are roughly 
one centimeter by 0 0.7 and here is one, se one centimeter by 1.5. I'm gonna do it with a Dremel like uh, it's shown in the guidance and uh, another thing is on the rear side we need to fit these brackets but you can already notice that these components here, they are these SMD components, they are already there's some rubbing, there's a volume conflict. So all of this outer ring on this side it will also need to be um, trimmed down. And also I will try to um, insulate it. It's already insulated, but only on the bottom face. Now the sides, just in case. I was planning to use the Dremel with this bit, which is what I have right now, in order to remove material this way and this way. But uh, yeah, the problem is this corner. So I think I will approach it from the top and drill holes, or one hole or holes, I don't know what was the plan, but at least in the corner. So with the, with the disc, I will reach this area and it will be already um, all the material will be removed at this point. All right, this is what I've done. Now is the Dremel bit. Let's see. Most of it is done. It's not perfect, but I made all the uh, the drilling, all the holes at the same depth. You can see that I'm struggling struggling to get to the corner of each of these squares. That's why now I uh, think I'm gonna do the big bits with this one, but I'm gonna use my vertical driller in a very conservative speed and then finally for trimming down this one the reason why I'm not using ball nose is because of the nose uh, if it's vertical there is no speed no grinding speed there is nothing so I am gonna give it a go but it's looking nice hey it looks like this grinding bit is doing pretty well I want to switch now to the smaller one so I can do a bit more of a finishing job uh, of course uh, reach the corners Hey, it looks rather nice, right? No one's going to see this, so I'm not looking for perfection. Just to remove these little two corners in there. Always, by the way, I don't know if you realize that all these corners I, are always rounded. In order to avoid heat concentrators, I guess. So I'm gonna do the same. I will consider this almost finished. I wanna do some polishing here just to improve the surface roughness. And... Here you can see how I reduce this side and this side a little bit. I want to reduce these two sides too. This is how it's looking like. I had to. It's not picture perfect, that's for sure. I had to uh, also use some sanding paper. Um, I'll show you in a second how I did it. And a few. Uh, I use a few grits in order to leave it smooth. So you have a smooth transition when I'm talking about heat transfer. I use this file. Um, I actually use this file just to trim down the edges. I was putting sanding paper like this, then no finer than 800 grit because it doesn't make sense. I don't want to leave it uh, mirror polished. It doesn't make sense. Back to the cave. It looks like everything is fits quite well. I have a line in the holes. And everything looks pretty well. I don't know if you will be able to see it to be honest but that's where the pad is if you take a look at the side you can see it's not bent anymore it's, it's just good you don't feel any volume conflict i have cleaned and purified the surfaces you can see how shiny this one is and i have added some uh, insulating tape electrical insulating tape to all these sides because whenever you place it on the other side you can clearly see that there is a risk that i will be touching well i will short circuiting uh, if we can call it that way, to components, let's say resistors. Uh, I hope this way it's going to work fine. Um, let's continue. You can see there is enough clearance on this side. And on this side too. Uh, you can also see that the, the, the pockets are overdimensioned, but I did it on purpose. Um, the last thing we need to check now is all these little resistors we have on the sides. This one's here and this one's here that look dangerously close even though we have, well, 
although we have uh, two layers of insulating tape there. All of these are capacitors, <laughs> see something, and they are making, I mean, they are beeping all over the place, um, which is would be normal from one side if they are electrolytic, blah, 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 blah. Um, the thing is, I don't feel comfortable with this being so close to this one, so I think I'm gonna create like a chamfer below, so I'm gonna feel a bit more comfortable. I'm gonna remove this bracket and give it another go. This is what I was talking about. I think now it should be just fine. I'm gonna just do the same with the tape. This side looks already much more different. You could see when I removed the bracket before the dents in the in the uh, insulation tape, but nothing major. But I don't know. this one is there, it's right on the edge. And here, they're a bit on the edge. That one is a bit to the inside, but I think it should be right. And yeah. Back to the last two pieces of this puzzle. Uh, I'm gonna start with this guy first. And then for the hard drive, I think I will need to 3D print some brackets like I did for the other one. The adapter fits uh, rather well. And this screw was provided by the kit. Of course, the link is uh, in the description just in case you wanna purchase it. Now, here's the, let's call it the hard bit. I need to take these two lines from this guy here. But first, I wanna check if all the antenna cables will reach this place safely. It looks like all the antenna cables will reach it properly. I mean, this part here. Things to take into account is the J01, well, is 0, 1, 3, and 2. Um, they are marked here, you can see the lines in, in this cable here. This is 2, this is 1, this is nothing which is 0. And the last one, I assume this one is going to be A3. I am about to butcher this guy. Uh, I need to remove these four pins here on the sides. I don't know how successful this is gonna get. But I already have a wire. This one is from a USB cable. And I just need four pins, so everything should be here. And I just need to check the diagram for the connection, and this should be it. It looks like I did it. It's not that complex, but I don't know how long this is going to last. <laughs> there you go, it's ready. I checked everything, everything is working. I mean, continuity wise. And that's it, now I'm going to reroute this cable so it, it lays probably here and I'll show you how it looks like. Something like this. All the antennas are below. I have to put a little bit of tape, as you can see here and here, just to insulate whatever the connection could make with the antenna or interference. Uh, the insulation tape between this component and the adapter. And let's continue with the SSD drive. I need to design some brackets. All right, today is going to be pain day. Not pay day, pain day, okay? Uh, I have uh, rearranged all the cables here. I think now it looks much uh, neater than before because before it was that, well, there was one wire here. I mean, this crossing is in the middle of the airflow right now. It's not there. Now I'm with the brackets for the uh, SSD drive. I have uh, 3D printed some models. I'm gonna test it. And uh, of course, the if you want models, they will be in the description. And this is how it's going to be. These are the 3D printed parts. And as you can see, it's very simple. It's like a S shape. On one side you have a slot, on the other one you have uh, just a hole. It's supposed to go this way. So how do we assemble this? First, we need to fit these ones here. Then these two here. These ones, just not, don't tighten too much because we will adjust the spacing when we try to fit them in these bushings. We'll do the same on the other side. We'll fit these two and then we'll try to adjust it with this bracket. And finally, the differences in tolerance and all the stuff will be uh, considered here because they have very, you see, they're a very small slot too. Um, I will need three tips. Torx 10, Torx 8, and P80, Philips 0. Uh, for all of this, I'm using I'm using M3 uh, by six millimeters screws. These are very usual in electronic comp electric components, electronic components. You can find them in your DIY store for sure, but you can choose anything else if you like. 
Right, I have them here. They are just uh, not very tight here. So I adjusted now the spacing. Uh, now very carefully you take it out. And you tighten them. Now I did here the same thing at the top. They are not tightened yet, but now the distance is, let's say we adjusted the distance. Now you just place it here. Okay, you see all these holes are coincident. And we tighten the screws. And these ain't going nowhere. It's pretty tight. I still have to correct the size for these holes here. And bear in mind that it's only one part. You can use them in all sides. So and it's very easy to print. It takes about 20 minutes. Um, the only thing is that uh, the holes, they are not perfect because they are printed in Z direction. And um, yeah, there's no more holes, it's like more like an ellipse and yeah, I need to increase the, the diameter, but it's already fixed in the second version that you will have in the, link, uh, in the description. So now I'm going to place the LCD panel and let the paint begin. For now, first step is High Sierra, then we will try to see if we can upgrade to Big Sur. This is what we got. The i7 processor, 32 gigabytes RAM. Um, SSD one terabyte from Crucial. It looks like the Nvidia I ordered from AliExpress was already uh, flashed by the Nikki firmware from Nikki. I don't know if you can hear, but there are fans working. I don't know why. I'm gonna check temperatures, um, do some tests, and then let's try to upgrade to high uh, to Big Sur. Before we continue, we have, I have some numbers. Uh, the speed of the SSD is uh, expected, I would say. Uh, nothing at all. There's no major difference except for the writing speed. I think before it was around 110 uh, megabytes per second in uh, in the other iMac. And this one is 474, but we changed the hard drive. It's more capacity, blah blah blah. So this doesn't really, it's not really comparable. But then we can go here for the graphics card. We got an OpenCL score of zero for some reason. I mean, I know we should do it with metal, but for that I need the uh, Digbench uh, 4 that I need to purchase it and I am sure I have, I have it but anyway uh, if we go for this if we go for um, CPU uh, this is rather interesting before we got a single core score of 3682 and today well in this one 3754 which is an, an increment of 2% so just okay but the multi-core before on the other iMac in the i5, it was 8982, and for this one is 12136, which is a 35% increase in um, performance. Not something. I'm also checking the temperatures. Um, I've just only downloaded this widget, it's called Fanny, F A N N Y. And yeah, it tells uh, fan speeds and also the CPU and GPU temperatures, which are. I would say they are very very normal. Now I need to fix what happened with fan number two, which is the hard drive fan as far as I know. This is open core legacy patcher. Um, everything is right there, link down below. And first, how do I get started? Uh, you need to check if your model is supported. I already checked this one, it's okay. You do need to download and build a macOS installer. Uh, you can figure it out yourself. I already have mine here, right here. And the other one is to download, uh, to run the Open Core Legacy Patcher. Recommended to download the TUI app rather than the graphics uh, user interface app, the terminal one. It's uh, in the forum. I don't know exactly why. I just follow the steps. I built open core, I install open core to a USB or internal hard drive. In this case a USB is different from a hard drive because it's not really clear on the web page. So let's see how it goes. So I have let's say now I have a hard drive containing the macOS installed image and a USB containing the open core patcher. Um, let's see if this works. And uh, now I am going to reboot and hit the run button. We got it here. Let's see.
It's working. The only thing is, I could connect via Wi-Fi to my network with my new PCI Express card, but I couldn't do anything with Bluetooth. I'm pretty sure everything is in the forum, and I will finish everything by the time Big Sur is installed. And I also want to see if the issue with the fan is solved but in a magic way. Yes, and it happened. And uh, now I'm trying to troubleshoot why I don't have a Bluetooth card because I have Wi-Fi but if I go to Bluetooth there's nothing forget about what I mentioned before uh, when I was assembling this wire I think it's good that I show you that uh, <laughs> uh, mistakes are always made and especially with all my um, assumptions but uh, yeah, okay, this is the right uh, schematics that I found in the in a forum, uh, the colors don't make sense, but apparently there's a lot of people saying, yeah, this is the right way and everything, and they even prove that it's correct. So what I'm doing right now is uh, here, the first column is what I currently have in this wire that used to go to the Bluetooth stock uh, PCB. So the first pin is not used, but uh, the rest is red, uh, sorry, green, red, purple, blue, black. And they correspond to D2, D4, D3, R15 um, and D6 in the stock Bluetooth PCB. What I'm doing here in the new one, well, first the label, the gray is 3 volts, red is D minus, purple is D plus. And uh, what I'm doing now with the wires, uh, the wires colors, the white colors I chose is green for uh, 3 volts, red for D minus, black for D plus in my new board. And this is what I currently have here, it's not the, my soldering skills, I mean, with my current soldering tools, I am not able to make a better soldering uh, points, joints here, and they have been breaking, and I will deal with them the best way I know, but you can see here, the USB D+, plus, D-, minus, and then the 3 V3 should go here. Why do we need this? Well because sometimes we, if we want to use the, the Wi-Fi and the Bluetooth independently, switching it on and off, we need to supply a 3v3 line here. Otherwise, you need to restart the computer and you will get everything again. I left it like this, still looks neat. I am going to give it a go and test if now I have Bluetooth. I got Bluetooth. Yeah, this guy was right. Yeah. And I was wrong. <laughs> I'm gonna show you a little bit about the POS installation with OpenCore because you remember I had to create a USB flash drive with all the OpenCore uh, settings and then a um, hard drive containing the image of Mac OS. Well, it happens that whenever you finish installing everything, you still need to leave the USB stick all the time plugged in, otherwise, the computer will never restart. But there is a way you could take this configuration file and copy inside the hard drive, the main hard drive, so there's nothing sticking out of your iMac. So, for that, you're, once you installed everything, you just initialize the computer in recovery mode or from the image you, you installed uh, macOS, then you will run the disk utility. And as you can see here, what I did is, you can only do it from there, is create a partition in MS-DOS FAT16, okay? of like a hundred uh, megabytes, it could be 50. Okay, once you finish, you restart the computer with this partition, you go here to open core, you press, okay, I want to build open core, you will build it, press okay, and then you go and you, you say, install open core to USB internal hard drive. So you go number two, then you say the drive you want is number zero, it's the main drive, make sure you don't have anything else plugged in. And then from here, if you can see number two, untitled, I'm not going to do it, but just need to hit number two and that's it. And then you, whenever you restart, again, just leave it running, it will do it by itself. Perfectly, you don't have to choose anything. Time for benchmarks. Well, I just wanted to check if the speeds from the uh, SATA hard drive are okay-ish, they are exactly the same as before. And now I'm jumping to Jigbench. This time it's not Jigbench 4, it's Jigbench 5. 
and I'm gonna compare the results with my current computer. So, on one side, on one side we have uh, a Mac uh, iMac mid 2011 uh, with an i7 2600, and this is the score: A03 single core. 2938 multi core. I know before it was 12,000 something, but the Geekbench we're using right now it's the, the 5. Then, if we go to uh, Metal Performance, you have a Geekbench score of 2515. It's very low, and I checked it online, and it should be around 3000, so it's just okay. Even if you go to the NVIDIA GT800 ATM. You will get basically double. This is my laptop. We have a single core result of 956. The score of the iMac is 84% of this one. Whereas for the multi core, the score of the iMac is 80%. So not bad for this is from 2017, this model. And it has an i7 7820 HQ. And uh, it's from 2017, so it's six years difference. I think it's pretty good. The iMac, I mean, and this one too. However, if we go to metal, we have a Radeon Pro 560 4GB DR5, if I'm correct, and the metal score is 15,669. So where the Quadro K3100M is 16% of this score. Well, I think it's pretty cool. Why am I doing this? You will see in the future. So the problem is that the hard drive fan, because there's no optical hard drive anymore, um, the fan is now at 2500 revolutions per minute. It's not bad, but it's very annoying because it didn't used to be like that, especially when I tested it with an actual uh, optical hard drive from the other iMac. It did, everything went really well. Short and easy answer is right here. I downloaded an app called Max Fan Control and it's for free. You can also buy the Pro version for 16 euros. I think there is no added value, at least in my case. So what I do is I set this up to run up on the startup of my computer and I change the default sensor-based value to uh, the smart connectivity of my uh, SSD drive. And as you can also see, you can set the temperature from which the the fan will start running and also the maximum temperature allowed. I think is just perfect and problem solved. However, I decided to check my motherboard, which is this one, A202828A. And I said, right, let me see what's the value of these connectors in the board file. Let, let me learn a little bit about this. So this is the board. You can see it here. Uh, all the files are in the description, just in case. So I click here, this is the connector, and you see that there is connector number seven, which is hard drive temperature. Well, Apple says, Apple Apple gives you a solution because the, some of these models used to come with SSD by default. And what you may see is a jumper uh, that uh, connects pins 2 and 7. Good, but what are we doing here? So I went to the PDF of schematics, and this is the connector. You can see here pins uh, number 2, which is a ground, and 7. The 7 goes to, uh, is giving this value, so it is the temperature, basically. And then what I'm going to do, I want to try to find this value, this, uh, sorry, this label. And we get to an important place, which is here. How do we sense the temperature here? Well, I think these are analog comparators. So what we get here is uh, analog values, and it says, from the drive, low and high, what does it mean? What I think it means is low and high running profiles for the for the fans. So between 0 and 0 0.3 is low, high is 1.2 to 2.0 volts. And here Apple says, yeah, just connect it to ground and that's it. Well, I think connecting it to ground means that there is no sensor 
uh, reading temperatures from the hard drive enclosure. Like it is super important, at least in this application, which is not for me at least. However, uh, I would like to read the sensor or at least use the embedded sensor in my S um, solid state drive. So if we keep reading, you will see that the dry drive is active or we have a valid signal protocol when the voltage received are between 0 and 2 volts which is here yeah then the drive is asleep when the hard drives uh, well the temperature is low or absent when uh, and then what happens with us absent is that the drive is absent which means that OB is pulled high unless uh, pch i don't know determines the ssd present and drives use the hard drive OOBL low, which then pulls hard drive OOB temp low. Well, what I could interpret from here is that you have an SSD drive, good. The hard drive fans will be set by default to a temperature uh, profile low. Low is between 0 and 0 0.3 volts. Yeah, but if you try to map the RPMs of a fan between 0 and 2 volts, 0 0.3 volts should be equal to half of the maximum speed of the fan. That's my logic behind. And I try to measure the voltage between pins 0 and uh, bits in the ground and pin 7 and it was indeed 0 0.3 volts. So how do we solve this? I honestly went a little bit farther and as you can see here I tried to perform this uh, little trick. I took pins 7 which is here this one and pin 2 and create a jumper but it didn't work same issue was happening and then i was lucky uh, because i have a screen lcd panel from uh, an imac from 2010 and and embedded it had a, a thermal sensor which is uh, basically a transistor working as a thermal sensor and it has the right part number so i could use it um, because based on some forums it is possible to use this sensor so it will sense the temperature at least from a real sensor and so the fan will, wouldn't go crazy yeah okay everything works not for me it works for imax from 2009 and 2010 not for this uh, model from 2011 which already didn't bring this external sensor next to the mechanical hard drive so the conclusion is just use the app and don't waste your time like I did because it was quite a bit of time and this fix with the app is so simple and it works so well and it's for free although I must say that all WC has a hardware solution for $50 uh, and if you are happy to buy it to purchase it good I think it's not going to work on IMAX from 2011 just from 2009 and 2010 so, I will consider this iMac as finished and uh, let's enjoy the result.